arc with a project. So in Eclipse, you can create a new Java project. Let's call it JavaFX testing. And we are going to specify a specific GRE, which is the GRE 1.8.0. Now, you need to choose this one instead of the first option. That is the requirement for running JavaFX programs. Click on Finish. Now you have a new project to test your JavaFX programs. We are going to create a test program. Let's call it class. My first JavaFX. And we specify that our class extends the application class. The application class is defined in the JavaFX application package. And it requires that we implement a method called start, which takes a stage as a parameter. We can actually implement this method. Let's call that this method takes a stage, which is the primary stage, as a parameter. And all that we are going to do is we are going to show this primary stage at this point. In the main method, the only thing that we are going to do is to launch using the same arguments the JavaFX thread. So at this point, the primary stage, we can specify a title for this primary stage. We can add event uh, handlers for this primary stage or we can show the primary stage. If we run this simple program, it will basically show an empty window. We now have our first graphical user interface. We can start populating this graphical user interface. We can set the primary stage, uh, in the scene in this primary stage. Let's create a scene, which is an instance of scene. Again, this is from JavaFX scene package. In this scene, we can actually add for this is a new scene for the current primary stage. We can specify that here. Or we'll see how to specify a scene using coordinates like 100 by 100 pixels. So we are going to show all of this in a couple of seconds. Let's start with our first examples. So graphical user interfaces are user interfaces that are graphical, like for instance, Excel, the iPod or uh, iPhone user interface, the operating systems like uh, OSX or Windows. Graphical user interfaces provide a human-friendly interaction. We can build graphical user interfaces using multiple frameworks. We are going to use JavaFX, which is part of GSC 8 since 2014, is relatively new. There are also old frameworks that we could have used, which are still available in Java, like for instance, the AWT uh, uh, package or graphical user interface framework and the swing interface that, it, that was available for the last 20 years in Java. Now, how do graphical user interfaces work? They loop and they respond to events. For instance, we construct the graphical user interface, we render the graphical user interface, we check to see if there are any inputs. We don't do this personally, Java does it for us. It checks to see if there are any events that are triggered on the graphical user interfaces constructed in Java, and we respond to that user input using handlers on our graphical user interface components. So the operating system recognizes events, like for instance a mouse click. It determines on which window it was clicked. It notices, sends this event to that program. 
The program runs in a loop. It checks a buffer filled by the operating system, waits for inputs. If it finds that input, like a mouse click, it determines on which component in the graphical user interface the click happened. In, and if it, that click was done on a component that has associated handlers, that means that is a relevant component, it responds accordingly to that by calling that handler. It basically calls a method which handles that event. So there are two parts to graphical user interfaces. One is the look, which we are going to talk about, uh, creating the physical appearance of the graphical user interface, populating it with custom uh, design, uh, components uh, contained into uh, uh, containers, and we can specify what is the layout manager. How do we want these components to uh, be placed in the graphical user interface? Do we want them to be placed one after another, which is called a flow layout? Do we want them to be placed in a grid, which is a grid layout? Do we want to be placed in a, a upper part or top, down, left, right, center, which is a border layout? Then the second part is how to specify the behavior of graphical user interfaces. Basically, we, we start another type of programming, which is called event programming. We specify what is the response if an event is detected on any graphical user interface component. So what the graphical user interface does for us, it provides visible interactive components and we don't have to specify, uh, we don't want to have the code to code our own window. We only specify what is, what are the handlers which are implemented using interfaces, what are the handlers called in case that someone uh, uh, generates an event on one, or on, on one of our graphical user interface components. Now, before we go into details about how to implement JavaFX, first we have to talk about the history of Java graphical user interface frameworks. So Java interface frameworks started in the 90s with AWT, which were basically uh, libraries known as the Abstract Window Toolkit. They were fine for developing simple applications, but they were directly implemented in the operating system graphical user interface framework. It was prone to platform specific bugs. It also looked differently for different graphical user interface uh, uh, libraries on the operating system. And they were basically replaced by a more versatile, robust library named Swing. These were painted directly in Java using Java code. So, as opposed to the previous library, which were all implemented using the graphical user interface components in the operating system, the swing components were painted on a canvas. Basically, the user was uh, using a frame, which was a window, and he was using or she was using a swing, to, uh, which was implemented in Java, to place these components in that canvas. So it was less dependent on the target platform and was uh, easier to use. However, it also had a problem. If a user would have developed an application for a standalone uh, application or for a graphical user interface in a web page, which was called an applet, there will be completely different pieces of code. Uh, there were different classes that were extended in Java, Java J-Applet and J-Frame for the different two cases. While we want a single type of application that could be run as a standalone or as a web interface. Therefore, Java uh, replaced Swing by a more, a better, newer graphical user interface platform called JavaFX. In JavaFX, we have the application, which is the entry point to JavaFX applications. We create a class that extends the application class, JavaFX application application, and we override the start method, which takes a window 
a window in Java FX is called a stage. And inside the window, everything that is not the title of the window or what happens when we close or minimize the window is called a scene. It's like the theater. You have the stage and different scenes. The scene in the park, the scene at home, and so on. So a scene is the container inside the stage. A, a, a stage is the top level container, which basically only has the title. The scene is the container for everything in the scene graph, everything inside the stage. And inside the, the scene, we can have multiple nodes. The node class is the super class of all the components in a graphical user interface in JavaFX. Here we have an example. My first JavaFX extends application and overrides the start method. So in this case, we create a button for OK, a scene which takes that button or any component that we want to pull in the current interface and that uh, and the size of the scene like 200 pixels by 250 pixels and then we set the title for the stage we set the current scene in that stage is the scene that we created above and we show the primary stage once we build everything we show it because we don't want to show it and then start populating that scene with components the only thing that we do in the main method we launch the javafx thread using the same arguments. So as long as our class implements extends application, the main method only starts the JavaFX thread. So let's return to our example. Let's assume that we want to place in this graphical user interface multiple buttons or just one button. OK, which is a new button for the string OK. And we place it in the current scene. And we set the primary stage to have that scene as the current scene. We also have to implement the component for button, which is JavaFX scene control. And at this point, we can run our program which will build a small window with the button OK in the middle, nothing else. If we want to put multiple objects in that window, we can now define a panel. So a pane or a panel is basically a container which contains multiple objects inside. And it depends on the type of this pane. It could be a grid pane, for instance, a grid pane would allow us to put objects uh, at certain cells in the grid. We specify the column, the, the, the column, the row, and we place an object in that grid. So let's create a grid pane, which is a new grid pane. And we specify that we want our button. Let's import the grid pane. And we want this pane get uh, add our button for OK at column 0, row 0. And the scene will contain this grid pane. So now we have the same thing, but we have a grid pane that has the button OK at column 0, row 0. At this point, we can actually create other buttons. We can actually add these buttons directly in the grid pane. So let's say that we have a button for OK, which is a new button for the string OK, and uh, a new button for the string cancel. And this is at coordinates 1, 1. Or 1, 0, column 1, row 0. 
in which case we have a small window with two buttons, one for OK and one for Cancel. Now, let's assume that we want these two buttons to actually do something. So we have the button for OK, which we added to the grid. And the button for OK also has an event handler. So we add an event handler and depends on the type of the event, we specify the event handler. But we can actually do this with lambda expressions. If an event E happened, then let's assume that all that we do in this case, we print a message. The OK button was clicked. Okay. So we added an event handler. Uh, we can do it in multiple ways. Most common is add event handler, but we'll see there are other ways to do it. Now, if we want to add additional stages, additional windows, we can actually create another stage, stage, a new stage, set the title to a new stage, add another button in another stage and show that stage. So we can add additional uh, stages to our application. So as we said, there are multiple types of scenes and uh, the scenes could contain, uh, there are multiple types of uh, panes. These panes are flow pane, grid pane, border pane, H box, V box, and stack pane. The flow pane is the easiest. A flow pane or a stack pane, uh, a stack pane would add all the elements in the middle of the pane, no matter how many elements we add. The displaying could take coordinates. So a graphical user interface for any computer starts with coordinates 0, 0 in the left upper corner. And we can specify how the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, and the vertical axis. And specify, for instance, to, spe to put points, circles, like for instance this circle, and we can set the coordinates to that circle at given uh, uh, values of the pixels. So let's implement this example. This example will create a circle which is put in the center of a, a certain panel. So let's close the previous two applications that we started. Let's modify, let's create a new JavaFX application. We are going to call it Circle Demo. Again, all that we need to do is to launch the JavaFX thread, implement or extend the application class, import it if it's not already imported, also add the start method. The start method takes a stage, the primary stage as a parameter. And in our case, we are going to create a pane and add in that pane a circle. So let's create our circle. C is a new circle. And we can set for this circle the coordinates the x and center y para parameters to a double value, let's say 100, and the same for y, and create a pane Again, we can add this pane by getting the children of the current pane and add the circle that we just created. We can put this pane in the current scene. Uh, 
in this case let's assume that this takes the pain and is of size 200 uh, 400 by 400 we can specify the radius of the circle to 50 and we can put the current scene in the primary stage and finally show the primary stage once we are done with all of this if we run it it will print the circle inside that window there are other instructions that we can use. We can set the title of the primary stage. Let's say that this is circle demo. We can set that our circle has a different color. Like for instance, we can set the stroke for our circle and we can set if it's filled or not. If we want other colors, we have them available in the class color, JavaFX color. So for instance, instead of using black, I can use other colors, beige, for instance. And it created the circle inside the panel or red for a better color okay any questions before we continue good so as i said the next part is how do we let's keep the binding properties because uh, they basically bind properties like the center of the circle to the width of the current pane. This is very useful for implementing games uh, because we basically sometimes people modify the resolution or the size of the windows. So we are going to continue from layout panes. So how do we specify where do we put components in the JavaFX uh, interface? We can specify it by the type of pane that we are using. The type of pane could be of the flow pane. That means that we place the nodes row by row, horizontally, and column by column, vertically. We place the nodes until the current row, the first row, is, is filled. And then the rest of the elements are uh, put in the next row or grid pane where we pa place the nodes in a two-dimensional grid or border pane when we, where we place the nodes in a top, right, bottom, left and center region and so on. H box is a single row, horizontal box, D box is a vertical uh, row, uh, column. So flow pane basically allows us to put elements in a one-by-one -one basis as long as those elements are put one after another in the width of the current row, otherwise it goes to the next row. So let's assume that we want to develop a graphical user interface that asks a person for the first name, last name, and uh, it may have a button for OK. There are multiple ways to do it. One way is to use a flow pane and just add the elements and size the scene to actually uh, uh, contain the elements in the order that we wanted to add them. Another way is to use a grid pane. We are going to do each one of them. So let's start a new JavaFX application. We are going to call it first last name with flow panel or flow pane. And in this class, 
we are going to create everything that we created in the past. We implement the launch method. We call the launch method with arguments to start the JavaFX frame. Uh, thread to extend the application class. Let's import Java FX application application. We implement the start method. This start method, which is here, takes the primary stage as a parameter. We create two text fields for uh, two labels for first name and last name and two text fields for these values. So let's create, for instance, first label F for a new label that says first and text field FT for a new text field that says last name. Similarly, we can create uh, uh, this says nothing. Similarly, we can create a label and a text field for last name. Let's call them L and LT. We need to import for both of them the JavaFX control. And we are going to import everything from that, which is JavaFX control.star. Let's create a flow layout, which is a flow pane. Let's call it flow pane which is a new flow pane. And in this flow pane, we are going to get all the children and we are going to add all the previously defined uh, elements. So we are going to add F, FT, L, and LT. Now at this point we can create a scene. As a new scene. Which takes the flow pane we specify the size, let's say 100 pixels by 100 pixels. And we add this scene to the current primary stage. And we show the primary stage. Done. So if we run it, it prints this window. If we resize the window, it moves the, the objects around, the components around. This is flow pane. So it basically allows us to put objects that are automatically uh, aligned in the first row and then the next row and so on. If we want, we can use a grid pane. So Let's assume that this is not what we want. We don't want this to be movable, easily movable. We want to specify that my fields are in a grid. I have the label at column 0, 0. The text field at column 1, row 0. 
and so on for the rest, including the Add button for adding a name. So in this case, I'm going to use, instead of a flow pane, a grid pane. And this is a new grid pane. of the type grid pane and instead of adding all the elements in this grid pane I'm going to add the elements at specified column numbers and row numbers so 0 0 and similarly I can add the text field for first name at column 1 row 0 and for last name at column 0 row 1 and column 1 row uh, 1 and if I run this example and I spell grid pane correctly it prints a grid. No matter how I resize it, it basically contains the same two elements. And let's say that we also add a button. This is a button for OK on the bottom. So in this grid pane, I also have a button OK, which is an instance of button with the text OK and this button is added at column 1 row 2 in this case it will look something like this now next we want to add handlers for for this components. So we start a different type of programming. This is called event programming. It's a different type of programming. Until now in this class CSE 114 we learned two types of programming. Procedural programming which was basically the main method executes the statements in a sequential order from the first statement to the last statement of the main method and object-oriented programming, which specified that complex types can be built by smaller types using data fields and inheritance and polymorphism and so on. Event programming is a different type of programming. In procedural programming, you execute procedures or statements in the statement order. In event programming, code is executed when events are detected. Like, for instance, the operating system monitors for events like keystrokes, mouse clicks, uh, touch uh, on the touch screen, uh, even time events that a certain time was reached or a timer was reached. The operating so uh, uh, system sorts these events and reports them to the programs on which uh, the click or the event was detected. Now, where do we come in? For each control, we define an event handler. It constructs an instance, we construct an instance of this event handler, and we tell the control who is the event handler for my uh, controller. This event handler contains code to update the internal state of the data with the response for that event. These event handlers are also called event listeners. Depending on the type of the control, we have different event handlers. So the event source in the graphical user interface can be anything in the JavaFX uh, framework. Could be a button, a choice box, a list event, a list view, and so on. And this is everything that we have as event handler sources any type of node, which could be parent, control, image view, media view, labeled, which is the superclass of all buttons and labels, which is has a subclasses button base 
and label. Button base has a subclasses button, checkbox, toggle button, and radio button. There are also other types of controls like scroll bars, uh, sliders, text controls like text area, text field, password field, lists, combo boxes. Different types of sources can detect different types of events. For instance, a panel or an image view can detect mouse clicks. Uh, a labeled, which could be a button, could detect key strokes. Now, what happens the moment that an event is detected? JavaFX constructs an event object, an object that carries information about the event, like the coordinates of the mouse click, or the Unicode of the keystroke that we currently clicked, or the time when the, click, the event happened, and the pointer to the event source, the object on which this key or this event was detected. The event object is sent to all the registered listener objects. So all the handlers that all, all the uh, ob list uh, all the, if the event object goes to the source, and from the source it re it calls all the listeners for that source. So the event handler is defined by us with specify the method that gets in, that gets called when an event is detected and we define our own listener class but using inheritance and polymorphism we basically implement an event handler instance of the type of the handler handled by that event component but by that GUI component the event objects contain information about the event, like the location of the mouse click, the source that was uh, that this event happened on, and we basically define what happens when such an event is triggered in the listener. Here we have an example. We basically the OK handler is an instance of the type event handler action event, which in the moment that someone will click on the OK button, we set on action, we set what happens, we set the listener for this button OK is the handler 1 uh, event handler. Inside the event handler, we implement the method handle. The method handle is a method that we uh, inherit from the event handler uh, interface. And we basically define in this method what is the response to the event that was triggered. So in the case of this OK event, it basically prints out the OK button is clicked. So let's execute this program in Java. So first we are going to create an event uh, handler uh, or handle event demo. All that we do in the main method of this handle event demo, we are going to launch the JavaFX thread. And we are implementing application, which is the JavaFX application application class. which requires us to implement the start method, which is here below. And as we did in this example, we are going to create a pane of the type I don't actually specify here the type of the pane, so let's create a flow pane. which is a new flow pane. And in this flow pane, I'm going to add two buttons. These two buttons are 
ok and cancel and for each button I'm going to create a handler for that button so for the button OK I'm going to create a separate class let's use an inner class this is the class handle OK which implements the event handler that takes an action event and by definition we, are, we need to add the unimplemented method handle. In this method all that we do we can update the current graphical user interface let's assume that we had a label status which is a new label which contains nothing at the beginning but we are adding this status to the JavaFX thread so to the pane so we are going to add each one of these let's add the button for OK let's add the status and let's add the button for cancel let's also create a scene with that pane and the size of 400 by 400 let's add this scene to the current primary stage and show the primary stage and add the handler so for the button OK that we created above we are going to add on set on action the handler a new instance of the handler that we created below it's a new OK handler or handle OK as the new handler for the button OK so if we press the OK button nothing happens that's because we don't do anything in the handle method but what we can do is to change the status set the text in status with something new maybe the old status plus new so now if we run it every time we press OK it adds new to the text in the status it takes the text of the old status and adds new and sets it as the new text of the status. Any questions? Any questions? These are all graphical user interfaces. Okay. So one thing that you can do in our project for this semester where basically right now the way that probably most of you implemented it is with a 
graphical user interface that is just a, a matrix. You can select the car and in the case of the car you can specify if you want it vertically or horizontally and you can specify what you want for instance where is the beginning of the car let's say it's at 1 and the column is 2 and then you have a matrix to represent the grid after you add uh, the cars and the trucks you can specify what you want to do next like you want to move a certain car to a certain position a certain truck to a certain position and so on how can you do that you basically will implement buttons for move up move down and you can specify which car are you currently moving and update a text area with uh, the new location of that car or that truck you can declare that the game is one the moment that we move the current car or truck to a new location to the exit location basically here now in my implementation or our implementation we basically specify that we are moving this uh, in a main method but with a graphical user inter interface we'll have to uh, implement it as a handler a handler for a button the button for OK or the button for up the button for down and so on and the way to do it is to, to modify the state of the current interface which are basically data fields in the current class let's return to the lecture notes so when we handle graphical user interface uh, uh, event we uh, the component has associated a handler and this handler will basically trigger be triggered when events happen there are multiple event classes depending on the type of the uh, event handler and uh, the type of the event source these event classes are action event input event and window event mostly we are going to use action events action events are when uh, an action is triggered on a button as I said the event object contains information about the source and there are different types of sources different type of events fired and different reg registration methods set on action is what we are using for setting the action for a button the delegation model is the model used by graphical user interfaces we basically for a button we set the action and the action is an instance of a specified interface in our case event handler interface so let's go to lambda expressions so the problem with our implementation is that it's very complicated we specify a handler which is an instance of a class and so on we don't want to have all of this complex code for just one handler for one button what we can do is we can specify that this is an action event we can directly create an instance of this type of event and specify the type what uh, the method that is running this uh, instance or if this is a single method interface we can specify directly what happens when someone runs when someone clicks on this uh, button so for instance here we can have the same code that we had in our handle method this is a lambda expression in Java FX or Java 8 so here we are going to say that the status text is set to the status get text plus the old status plus a, a new string new 
this is all that we need to do. Now our class is much shorter and it has exactly the same effect. Every time we click on OK, it prints new in the graphical user interface. So Lambda expressions are a new feature of Java 8. We basically, uh, you can see the Lambda expression as being an anonymous method. All that we need to do in set by action is to specify what is executed, nothing else. And this is an example. On the bot when we click on either one of the buttons, it prints out a message. This is all you need to know from JavaFX. JavaFX is not required for the final. There will be no questions from JavaFX in the final. The final will only have questions from objects, classes, interfaces, uh, arrays, of course, anything before the midterm, inheritance, abstract classes, and recursion, which is the topic of the next lecture. So all you need JavaFX for is for your project. And you can actually, I will show you how to do a simple version of the project uh, in a few moments after we stop the recording.